President. Yeah, the Honourable Paul Green. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. I rise on behalf of the Christian Democratic Party to speak on the General Purpose Standing Committee No. 2 report into elder abuse in New South Wales. The committee consisted of the Chair, the Honourable Greg Donnelly, who did a wonderful job, uh, myself as Deputy Chair, Ms Jim Barham, Ms Oni, <laughs> Honourable uh, Sophie Kotsis, uh, the Honourable Matthew Mason-Cox, uh, the Honourable Dr Peter Phelps, and uh, uh, the Honourable Ronnie Taylor. Um, uh, I thank uh, the committee members for their extensive contribution to this inquiry, and I also thank the uh, committee secretariat who uh, continued to provide expert knowledge and assistance to the committee so we could uh, investigate these important issues. The committee uh, were required to inquire into and report on the matters relating to the elder abuse in New South Wales. The terms of reference focus on abuse of a, a persons aged 50 years and older, um, the most common forms of abuse, government and community support services, police response to elder abuse, reporting constraints, initiatives to uh, prevent elder abuse, and of course the, the effectiveness of laws, policies and services in safeguarding elder abuse and any long-term solutions to elder abuse. The committee received a total of 122 submissions and 21 supplementary submissions from a range of stakeholders. We held four public hearings and heard from a total of 45 witnesses. We also held uh, two panel discussions with legal practitioners and academics. The committee conducted a consultation with the Aboriginal elders as a joint initiative with the Law, of, uh, Law Society of New South Wales Indigenous Issues Committee, and we, we thank them for hosting that. Uh, the uh, in internationally accepted definition of elder abuse, Mr Deputy President, adopted by the World Health Organisation in uh, the Toronto Declaration of the Global Prevention of Elder Abuse 2002, states that elder abuse can be defined as, quote, a single or repeated act or lack of appropriate action occurring within any relationship where there is an, an, an expectation of trust which causes harm or distress to an older person, unquote. Elder abuse can take various forms such as physical, psychological, emotional, sexual oh, yeah, yeah. and financial abuse. It can also be the result of uh, intentional or uh, unintentional neglect. Um, Mr S Deputy President, the, the committee found that we need to prioritise elder abuse as a policy issue. Uh, Professor Susan uh, Curl, geriatrician and uh, chair of the Faculty of uh, Medicine at S University of Sydney, described elder abuse as an issue demanding immediate and effective action. She quotes, until the late 80s, very little was known about the, its occurrence in the Australian community, but over the last 25 years, research throughout the country has confirmed the significance of, uh, of abuse as a social, medical and legal pro uh, problem. The committee asked the government to take domestic uh, and family violence in elders much more seriously as it uh, widely expected to grow with our ageing population. Of course, in New South Wales, the government uh, policy promotes the general principle that older people have the right to be treated with dignity and respect, to make their own decisions and choices, to live in a safe environment and to access the protections available to other adults in our community. Of course, uh, the committee also recommended that the New South Wales government make a significant new investment into the prevention of elder abuse by preparing a, and funding a framework that provides for sus, substantially enhanced primary prevention and uh, community education and awareness, uh, community engagement, carer support and later life planning initiatives. Of course, Mr Deputy President, duty of care is a legal, legal obligation to avoid causing harm and arises uh, when harm is reasonably foreseeable. Uh, if care is not taken. I believe everyone has a duty of care to provide information, support and assist older persons to prevent abuse. The committee found at times family members, lawyers and the finance industry did not exercise their duty of care in some instances. The committee found that financial uh, abuse emerged as a substantial problem demanding urgent government action. We were greatly uh, concerned by the claims that the law does not provide enough safeguards against financial abuse, especially in regards to powers of attorney. The committee also uh, is supportive of the introduction of, uh, of offences and penalties for the misuse and of enduring powers of attorney. The committee heard evidence that uh, Victorian legislation, uh, powers of attorney act, attorney act, sorry, 2014. 
uh, would enhance protections at the beginning when enduring powers of attorney are made and make it uh, more likely for attorneys to fulfil their obligations and less likely for attorneys to act in inappropriately. It is a clear, uh, clear uh, to the committee that New South Wales Police Force uh, leadership is seeking to improve frontline responses and that the police are building an effective working relationship with, uh, within uh, the helpline. Although we were concerned to hear that police responses uh, to elder abuse vary in their effectiveness, uh, depending on where they are, the, the resources they've got at disposal and uh, the geographical positioning across New South Wales. Of course, the uh, committee strongly supports evidence for greater protection for the elderly uh, by establishing a public advocate in New South Wales with the uh, power to investigate uh, complaints uh, uh, about abuse and initiate its, own, its uh, own investigation. A couple of the key areas, Mr uh, Deputy President, were the fact that we uh, really need to sharpen up the triggers uh, for um, organisations like bankers or um, different services, maybe uh, health practitioners, uh, to be very aware that, um, that, that um, when the um, elderly are in their care or um, uh, maybe hosting social functions or um, partaking of some, the, um, some issue in, in uh, those facilities that they're mindful about um, whether people have uh, been taken advantage. And of course, sometimes in banks, uh, that's probably more uh, easier in some banks when, when um, a person may take quite a lot of money out of a loved one's account. Uh, but we, we did find, actually, it was very interesting that uh, people there are some people out there, particular relatives, where they have a sense of entitlement, Mr Deputy President, and they, they basically think they have a right or they've earned the right to basically have uh, full indulge, indulging uh, um, moments uh, on their, their parents' account because they feel like they've, because they've cared for them or they've provided for them that they really uh, can be compensated uh, through that, that person's bank account. So they would uh, quite often maybe, you know, um, front up taking a, a couple of bucks, then a few more bucks, then a, maybe a hundred bucks, then it turns into thousands, and then suddenly they're paying their mortgage off with a few hundred thousand dollars. So these types of situations can uh, be monitored by banks where, where they have uh, the loyalty of those um, elderly customers and they have, have noted in the past their, uh, their banking habits that these should be little trigger points that um, um, the, the banking industry could probably train uh, their, their people are a little bit more uh, with. The, the other thing is, Mr Deputy President, is that we um, obviously have heard a lot uh, from the former Australian of the Year, Rosie Battle, uh, Batty, about um, domestic violence. And uh, I think you know, it, it's long overdue that uh, maybe that elder abuse would get that sort of um, airplay too. Um, it, it's, you know, we've got a growing population as we talked. Um, I think we have about 2,000... Uh, sorry. Um, uh, have um, quite a few... Two, over two and a half million people, probably over the age of 65 by now, but around by two, uh, 2050, that's a, likely to be about seven, uh, seven million people over the age of 65. So you could get, get an idea of how big this problem could get if we don't start to put some um, processes in place and some initiatives in place right throughout the community and healthcare professionals, uh, banking institutions, to make sure that we're on top of this. Uh, in, in particular, looking after our most vulnerable. Um, Mr Deputy President, I, I just say uh, fairly clearly that um, when people are taking from their, their parents without the permission and without the, um, the um, authority, uh, basically it's stealing. And um, it's not a nice thing to think that that's the way it is, but that's, that's in fact what it is. You are stealing from a loved one. And so we encourage people out there um, through the elder abuse, which played a, a small part in just getting across the airwaves a bit about people don't have a right to steal from their loved ones. And uh, neither do the professional law organisations have a right to steal either from our vulnerable uh, through uh, overcharging and other ways that they take advantage of uh, these services. And so we need to be, uh, we're in the right spot to protect our most vulnerable. Those that have given their life and given uh, their fruits of their labour to this state and, and many times this nation, if not uh, globally, uh, deserve the very best of care in their latter, uh, latter years and twilight years. So in conclusion, Mr Deputy President, I'm very grateful that this evidence has come to light and I've urged the government to take notice of the committee's uh, recommendations and make appropriate legislative and policy <coughs> reforms 
uh, so we can protect our most vulnerable. We need to listen and help where needed and uh, need to act sooner rather than later. On behalf of the Christian Democratic Party, I commend this great report to the House. Um,